ready. <laughs> okay, we're back. Uh, we know you're still with us, and we're going to do a couple of the stories like we normally do uh, here on the Social Liability Podcast. The first one's coming from the AP News. Woman charged with sending a bee swarm at deputies at her eviction. This is out of Springfield, Massachusetts. A Massachusetts woman was released a swarm of bees on sheriff's deputies as they tried to serve an eviction notice is facing multiple charges uh, of assault and battery. Uh, Rory Woods, 55, pled not guilty at her arraignment on October 12th in Springfield District Court and was released without bail, according to MassLive.com, citing court records reported on Wednesday. She and other protesters <laughs> maintained that they were trying to prevent a wrongful eviction. The homeowner, Alton King, uh, brought evidence of a bankruptcy stay to court the next day, at which point everything should have been stopped. Uh, Woods' lawyer did not immediately respond to a voicemail left by the Associated Press. However, Hampton County deputies were met by protesters when they went to the home in Longmeadow on the morning of October 12th, according to officials in the documented report. Uh, Woods, who lives in Hadley, arrived in an SUV towing a trailer carrying beehives and started shaking them, breaking the cover off of one and causing hundreds of bees to swarm out and initially sting one deputy. Uh, Woods, who put on a beekeeper suit to protect herself, was eventually handcuffed, but not before several sheriff's deputies uh, and employees were stung, including three who are allergic to bees. Woods was then told that several officers were allergic, and she reportedly said, Oh, you're allergic? Good. <laughs> Hampton County Sheriff Nick Cucci said Wednesday, uh, sorry, sorry, said Woods could have faced more serious charges if anything worse had happened. And I swear to God, his name is actually Cucci. C-O-C-C-H-I. <laughs> we have one staff member go to the hospital, and luckily he was all right. Deputies were simply doing their duty, according to the chief deputy, Robert Huffman. Uh, we have a court order that was presented to us with our job to effectuate the court order. It was Miss Wood's arrival with her vehicle and her trailer that really caused things to go haywire. So it, it completely premeditated in that she, and I'm looking at a picture of this, this, I'm shocked that it's a woman um, because she is so muscular and big, uh, but she's also wearing a beekeeper suit, but she has an SUV. It's in the background. You can see all the beehives strapped down to this trailer. I mean, it obviously thought this through and it was ready for it to, to leap into action as the world's worst superhero. <laughs> Do you think that she was charged with assault and Batterby? <laughs> I pushed the button. No, you don't get that one. Come on, man. Come on. That's, that's, that's gold. No, I mean. Yes. Honey's often a golden color, I'll, I'll concede, but no. <laughs> I'd just like to say that Miss Woods never consulted with the website, uh, Nice uh, disclaimer, Guido. <laughs> yeah. So has anybody ever asked uh, for death by bees? <laughs> I haven't heard that one. Um, not yet, anyway. I mean, give it time. I mean, but... <laughs> yes, p p un unlawful evictions do happen. I mean, it's not... It, I've served... Um, Different. I couldn't do the actual eviction in Pennsylvania, but I could do all the paperwork and the and the service leading up to it. And a lot of times, it's it's uh, professional renters. Uh, I've had one 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 girl. Her name was Lacey. I'm not gonna say her last name. Uh, but I think I served uh, notice to quit on her six or seven times. And I have a constable friend up there who's probably well doubled that. Uh, she just Sweet talks her way. She's a very well-spoken young lady. Um, she always tells people she works for a law firm as a paralegal. She doesn't. And, and, and she gets into these houses and just doesn't doesn't pay rent. I mean, she pays the first month in deposit, and that's it. And then you know, she knows the process, and she knows how how to drag things out. And, and a lot of times she makes it right to this, this cutoff in Pennsylvania that's got this weird thing that you can't evict people in the winter. Uh, if they're in the winter months, you, eviction can't occur. So she she she'll get multiple free months out of them, and eventually she'll negotiate a uh, listen. If you drop everything, I'll leave by this date. And she's she's just a professional renter. That's what she does. But <laughs> wow, what is going on in Springfield that, that this they've organized to this extent? 
That they, they have the bees on standby at all times. <laughs> rent a bee. Oh, there we go. We can go rent a bee.com, Buck. Oh, man. <laughs> Get more than flies with this, honey. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> all right. Our next story, because we're going international, too. Guido's not the only one here, but we're going to go to Australia. A uh, woman disgusted after her ex-husband starts a family with her daughter. I actually don't, I try not to read these ahead of time. I try not to, but I had to, I had to read. I this read one. this one too, man. I read the, I read this one too, because I couldn't believe it. I read the headline. I read the headline and I was like, clickbait. Well, no way. Tiffany felt like her, all of her dreams had come true when she met Mark. At the time she had a three-year-old daughter and had found a dating, a single mom predictably hard. Uh, she, met a man who wanted to raise her daughter and build a family together, and she felt like she had won the lottery. My life felt perfect. In 2010, I had a son with my husband. My life was complete. I had two kids, a great husband, a house, a car, nice job. Life was great. The 40-year-old American mom wrote on Reddit. Tiffany had no idea that just seven years later, her entire perfect world would come crumbling down. It happened shortly after her daughter's 18th birthday when Mark suddenly announced that he was done with their marriage. He told her that he was now in a relationship with her daughter and was leaving her for, for the daughter. <laughs> I couldn't believe this. I couldn't process it. I felt crushed, angry, disgusted, mad, every feeling I could feel. My now ex-husband never gave me creepy vibes, but if he got with my daughter when she was 18, I'm sure things were going on when she was a minor. Well, no shit, Kung Fu. You married a pedo. Let's just be reality here. But nothing Tiffany said stopped either of them from leaving and getting together. Uh, her daughter especially didn't seem to understand that her mom was so angry and upset. Yeah, even if, even if you weren't the daughter, you don't think that you know some, somebody that you, you started seeing and leaves their wife for you would not have any kind of animosity? I mean... It's kind of it's kind of a given, I would think, especially Australia. Right? Yeah, this well, is Well, you know, I've cut I kind of been there and done that, you know. Uh I'm sitting I'm sitting in the same room as the other woman that I left my wife for. And there was not any good feelings on that one. So no, no. They I can only imagine if it was a daughter. Ugh. <laughs> She doesn't seem to know why this is wrong or gross. She doesn't care about me. He doesn't seem to have an issue either. Uh, but my own daughter? Come on, Tiffany said. A year later, the new couple fell pregnant, which was when Tiffany decided to cut them both out of her life. I had my ex-husband stop coming around completely, and my ex is okay with not seeing our son now that he has his new family. My son has had hard times understanding why his sister and dad are gone, and I have not told him the truth. Maybe I should, but he's only 10. I told his sister, went to university, and his dad had to go away for a while. Long while. It's been four years since then, and Tiffany learned through a family member that her daughter was, at the time, pregnant with a second baby. This means that the now 44-year-old ex-husband has two children with Tiffany, now 22. <laughs> she, she now has two kids with my ex-husband, the man who raised her like he, she was his own. Uh... Wow. Uh, her kids are my grandchildren and, and happen to be half-siblings with my son. How sick is that? I'm disgusted. I'm still not over this, obviously. I don't know how to get over this. You can't. I just want to move on. Good luck. <laughs> wow. I mean, I, I've, I've heard, you know, you, you see, it's a big trope on, on the internet right now about the, uh, the, the step-sibling videos on like certain adult websites but it actually happens you're like oh it wasn't wait a minute wasn't uh, it wasn't uh, remember that remember the uh, the jerry springer movie yes wasn't wasn't i remember the show but no there was a movie they they put out it was like jerry springer uh, uh, ringmaster that's what it was called it was called ringmaster that's what it was ringmaster and, and the uh, yes the the woman like the, the the old trailer park cougar, her boyfriend left her for her daughter. 
<laughs> it's an episode. It's it's Ringmaster Two. <laughs> can't keep it in your pants. Keep it in the family, right? <laughs> I mean, seriously, though, how how does somebody that you know you raise a child from what she said they, they got together when the child was three, 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 and, and you, yeah, you you how. How do you then feel romantic feelings towards like, a, the child was this big? I mean, <laughs> now all of a sudden you're you're feeling well. <laughs> she got A on her test. I got to reward her somehow. I mean, god damn, dude! I really like this. Is this is so uncomfortable? Like. Ooh, like oh my gosh like my like just makes my whole fucking body like a full body dry heave like my butthole even puckered a little bit like <laughs> like what the fuck man well, I mean, what uh, that's, uh, that's too much craziness for me to comprehend this early in the morning <laughs> <laughs> So, so watch out for a, a service request from a from a for a forty four year old mother in Australia. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be on the lookout for that one. Maybe maybe, maybe don't turn that one in. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, uh, fell through the cracks. I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> I, I meant to send it to Australian police, but for somehow it went to the Hell's Angels. I don't understand. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, <laughs> wrong box. My bad. Oops, clerical error. Clerical error. It was your secretary's fault. <laughs> Going in through the outdoor. Well, our last story comes from Fox 13 out of Memphis. Uh, man cuts off multiple catalytic converters with power saw to help pay for his warrants. Is this a thing where you guys are at? Because Buck, you're on the East Coast, Bob, or uh, Guido, you're on the uh, the West Coast. Uh, is this like a big? Oh, it's huge. Is it really? Here... I, I it might yeah. be here. I hell if I know. <laughs> True. Here, here in the Midwest, dude, it's it's getting like really bad. Um, so I, I, for example, let's just say on our town here. Uh, first, they started going just random businesses that had their cars out overnight. Uh, and then like one night we had three vehicles for our city that do the meals on wheels program. They snapped all of those. Um, they went to the health department, got all the health department vehicles. Uh, then they broke into the, uh, the city's parks department and, and we're taking them off of all the work trucks. I mean, it was horrendous how many catalytic converters that were getting stolen around here. Then they started, oh, yeah. like, my favorite is when they went to the car lot and they took all the catalytic converters off the new cars. I mean, it's like, oh, wow. Really? <laughs> now, do yeah, do they well, sell for a lot get... of money? So there's some, there's some precious metals in them. A couple hundred. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, some of them, it depends on, on what vehicle it's off of. Some of them are like, you'll get like 50 bucks. There's other ones you can get like 500 for. It just depends on, on which which vehicle it comes off of. And there, this is the thing, though. They're not actually selling the catalytic converters as catalytic converters. They're selling them for... I forget what material's inside of them, but it's a precious metal. And... It, I think it's rhodinium or something. Rhodinium, and, and, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, it's a big market if you can find a, a buyer. That's, that's the whole thing. Um, a you lot know... Of, go ahead. Interesting little helicoptered in fact here from Caregiver Katie. Uh, an analysis by Ben Verified shows that there has been an estimated 26,000 catalytic converter thefts so far in 2022. That's just the reported ones, like, too. That's just the reported and, ones. Well, and then it, it, it also shows catalytic converter thefts through 2021 more than quadrupled from over 14,300 in 2020 to nearly 65,400 in 2021. Dang. So it's it's definitely like, a, a, it's a crime that's it's it's because it's, it's so easy. I mean, really, you get yourself a sawzaw and you just crawl under a car and zip zip, you're out, you know, and it, it, the problem is just finding a buyer. 
That's the big thing. Because um, uh, a lot of the, the, the scrap yards and everything, they know that you stay the hell away from these because the cops are going to come looking for them. Now, some of your more shadier oh, yeah. ones, if you want to hide something, in a junkyard, it's a pretty good place to hide something because ain't no one ever going to find it if you hide it good enough. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we also had like a, uh, the water meters. People were stealing water meters uh, for copper because they're just out. They just wow. a wrench and in two minutes you can steal a water meter. So it's not nearly as profitable as a catalytic converter, but uh, like I said, though, this happened in Memphis. A man was arrested for stealing multiple catalytic converters because on August 16th, the manager of LKQ on Hickory Road saw two men driving a lot in a dark-colored Honda Civic get out and begin cutting catalytic converters off company vehicles. Pretty, just right in front of dude, just watched it happening. Uh, Memphis police arrived and saw one of the men, Trevor Coop, uh, walking away from a company truck while holding a power saw. <laughs> Tools of the trade, they might say. The officer told Coop to stop. The man dropped the saw and began running on foot. MPD was able to arrest Coop after a brief foot chase. During a search, officers found seven catalytic converters in the Honda and found other converters in several other vehicles. Uh, Cooper told MPD that he and his friends cut off the converters with plans to selling them uh, afterwards. Additionally, the money raised from the converters was going to go to pay Cooper's active warrants. <laughs> Cooper was arrested and charged with theft of property from, with motor vehicle value in the, between $1,000 and $2,500, theft of property between $10,000 and $60,000, and evading arrest. Coop has a court date on October 17th. The Honda Civic was also <laughs> stolen since September 17th, according to the affidavit. I mean, if you're going to go big, you might as well go. If you're going to do it, just go big or go home, you know. Steal, steal, the, steal the car, Absolutely. steal the converters. So he was unable to fly the coop then. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> oh yes, oh oh yes. But the thing, the thing is, though, catalytic converters aren't, oh. aren't small. I mean, they're 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 a little bit about the size of a football, but a lot heavier. <laughs> I wonder if I wonder if he was trying to pay off outstanding warrants for theft of catalytic converters. That would be awesome. <laughs> I mean, it, it's there. Go ahead, go ahead. Guido. There are so many, uh, there are so many scrap metal uh, yards uh, in and around the area where I live. You know, these uh, these thugs uh, with the, you know, the sawzalls and all that stuff. They're just hitting random vehicles. Actually, I, I'm. Not so much random vehicles, because there's a website that'll tell you what the top 10 most valuable catalytic converters are. So they're targeting, like, Honda Pilots, and they're targeting Priuses. Um, when they take the cats to the uh, less-than-reputable scrap metal recyclers, you know, oftentimes they turn a blind eye. They pay them out or whatever and send them on their way. Um, there's serial numbers on these catalytic converters, but they're not traceable, which is uh, kind of a kind of a problem. Yeah, I've I've seen news out and, here. Law enforcement. I've seen news yeah, stories where they're they're, they're trying to get people to like engrave their names or something on the catalytic converters or or the VIN numbers. Painting them bright orange. Yeah, yeah, painting them. Yeah, I'm not sure what the painting now, would what, do, but I've I have seen it. Now, what are yeah. what are law enforcement out there trying to do, Guido? Um, so law enforcement out here in the, in the Bay area and Northern California have actually set up, um, days where you can drive your car into like a shop and they'll spray paint your catalytic converter orange, or they'll, uh, write your license number or, you know, engrave it with something. So it's an identifying mark. So therefore when the recyclers get a painted cat converter, um, you know, hopefully it doesn't come to that. Hopefully the, the cat thieves will see a, a painted converter and, and go to the next car. But, um, you know, they're, they're doing every, everything they can to kind of thwart that. Uh, in fact, you can get uh, a cage for your cat converter. Now. Those I've seen. Installed. Yeah, I've seen. I think you could actually buy them on Amazon. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't understand what yeah, the... What the I don't understand what the... Um... 
the paint supposed to do? Is that just be a deterrent? Uh, but kind of, I, I would yeah. assume so. Yeah. So I, I'm looking right now on Amazon. We have cat, cat security, catalytic converter protection shield. Uh, and of course, the first one is for Honda Prius, between, or Toyota Prius, rather, from 04 to 09. And it sells for $169, $160. Uh, but there's plenty of other yeah. ones actually here too. There's a catalytic converter a wireless anti theft alarm with security vibration motion sensor. That's only thirty bucks. That might be the way to go. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, who listens to car alarms anymore? Man, I sure. remember when I bought my truck when I lived in Mexico. The very first fucking thing I did was I had the catalytic converter taken off because <laughs> it ran better. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You weren't sneaking up on anybody. Because that's the thing. If you, if, you're, no. if you get in your car and you turn it on, there's no catalytic converter. It is bloody loud. It'll scare the it'll scare the piss out of you. Yeah. Well, you know what? I mean, yeah, for sure. they, they charge for ga uh, gas down there by the fucking liter, dude. <laughs> I don't care how loud my truck is. <laughs> are, are you seriously catching <laughs> about, oh, they ain't using gallons. <laughs> I mean, no, seriously. No, it's just that you know what, whatever, whatever price per gallon you see, that's fine. Whatever, whatever, whatever. You know, you go to a gas pump in Mexico. When I lived there twenty years ago, yeah, you're old. You pull up to the pump. Yeah, you pull up to the pump, and it's like you go up there and you're about ready to do a backflip. You're like, oh yeah, buck eleven, a buck eleven. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's only a buck eleven. And then you're like, whoa, 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 whoa wait, 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 wait. It's a buck eleven a liter. Oh. Oh. I have I have a fifty five gallon gas tank. Good oh, luck. No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you could always drive to Venezuela where it's like eight cents a gallon. Just saying. Just saying. I, <laughs> I'll tell you what, there were no drive. Shit. <laughs> Lucky, I, it's a drive. Oh my God. You, I, I don't do that anymore for health reasons, but I should have just stopped driving a hell of a long time ago for personal safety. I mean, no, I'm not driving. No, I'm not. I'm a menace. Now, wait, but I saw the conversion kit in your van last time I saw you over the summer. You're not driving at all anymore? No. Mm -mm. Nope. So what you're no saying is care, caregiver Katie dislikes having those manual controls up on the steering wheel is what you're saying, huh? She, no, there were no manual controls in the car. There was just a steering wheel. There's a suicide spinner. That's it. Okay, I thought, There's I, no I, hand I, thought, controls. I thought I saw the hand controls. Maybe I was wrong. No, 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 no. The hand controls are in the back. Because <laughs> I got them from Amazon. Oh, God. Yo, no, dude. No, no, no. In, in Cripple World, you, you either got to get financing for shit or you got to pay for it out of your pocket or you got to make it. <laughs> All right? So <laughs> I, figured, I figured, well, I can't get the actual, like, legit conversion done. Broomstick handles and duct tape probably won't look good if I get pulled over. So I'm going to have to go with something that looks legit-ish. And so I did. I found uh, I found these uh, these nifty little hand controls on Amazon. It was uh, they're they're pretty hip, you know. They uh, they got me they got me through a lot of uh, a lot of time. But yeah, it was terribly irresponsible for me to hold on to driving as much as I did. So I wouldn't. Mm -mm. No. So I'm seeing the conversion kits uh, for. Well, some of them are like fifteen hundred dollars, and other ones are like, yeah, dude. And some of them are one hundred and fifty, but the one for one hundred and fifty looks a lot like somebody just put like a stopper on the end of a cane. <laughs> They're using it to press. That's, that's 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 the one I had. <laughs> <laughs> that's that that's the one I got. <laughs> that, that looks that looks incredibly irresponsible. <laughs> Actually, no, I think I got the quick stick. That's what this is. Quick I think stick. That's, Q U. <laughs> that's what, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, man. You got it. But then they got see that's that's one that's not good for long trips though. That's not good for long trips. You need the ones that look like it's got a bar 
and then two things because that way you push it to stop and you pull it to go. Because with that with that quick stick one, it's all about your thumb. And I'll tell you what, when I used to have to go get my kids in South Carolina, okay, that's twelve hours driving, six hours down and six hours back. Do that with your motherfucking thumb, bro. <laughs> no, no. I found out that was a bad idea real quick. Gosh. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> you come back from a long trip and you're like, whatever you like, you need somebody to like do everything for you. You're like, uh, uh. I can imagine. Yeah, I can imagine. Well, Buck, that's going to bring us to an end of episode 148. Uh, a big, big thank you to Guido Finelli for joining us. This is absolutely great. Uh, we find we've we've talked about Rena Hitman so much, and now we finally got to speak to the man himself, and that's just phenomenal. I, I've so Guido, you sent me your number a couple couple weeks ago, and I've been like, no, I do not want to talk to this cat until we get him on the show. <laughs> it's like I don't want I don't want to ruin anything. <laughs> oh, awesome! I had fun with you guys. I had fun with you guys. I, I enjoy your podcast. Uh, we um, we appreciate so thank that. you guys you're, you're, very much for having me. you are you are among a, a very elite number of people that actually listen because it's not that much yes <laughs> so that that being well, said well I've turned on my kids to this so excellent we'll stop my we'll, kids listen also we'll, we'll there's to, a couple more for you we'll try to cut down on the cursing then <laughs> they, I, they they've heard it all <laughs> I was about ready to say. Mm. That being I said, no folks, commitments on that the Social Liability Podcast drops every Wednesday. We do not charge anything for the show. It is completely gratis. Uh, the only thing we ever ask that you pay is attention. And if you could tell a friend, that would be excellent. Uh, one more listen. You know, what the heck? We're not making money off of this. <laughs> this, this, this podcast was started, Guido, just to keep Buck sane. Indeed, because, you know, he's, he's getting close to the, the precipice of, uh, of using your website. <laughs> Yeah. No. <laughs> okay, folks. I am. Well, we do offer group and senior discounts. <laughs> How about for the for disabled? I mean, for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Folks, you can go to Red Hitman. Can in Medicare. If you guys go to rentahitman.com, there is a merchandise section. Uh, there is, they, Guido's got some pretty awesome uh, field operative t-shirts. Uh, Buck and I both have them. Buck's wearing his right now if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, they're, they're pretty hip. Uh, you can also donate for a cup of coffee for Guido, which I, I think Buck just yes. did the other day. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay, we got the coffee. Excellent. Okay, folks. Thank you, thank you. I'm the Raz, he's the Buck, and we also have Guido. Thanking you all for listening. We'll catch you on the next episode of the Social Liability Podcast.